Hey, Sean Strains here. I'm going to make a video about starting out the proto throttle. Um, I've made a bunch of videos about the proto throttle, kind of jumping around a little bit. But if you're just opening your proto throttle up and you're just getting started or just start programming, uh, here are going to be some useful tips. I've seen a lot of people in the forums um, in the group IO on um, email that a lot of people are getting started and having some issues um, and are doing or working on troubleshooting for uh, con and and whatnot. So I'm gonna go over kind of how I set up my proto throttles and then how to program for con uh, and things to kind of be mindful of when you're doing that stuff. So let's get started. All right, so I've got my little DCC programming track, my computer, my log programmer, my DCC system, my DC throttle, everything I could possibly need, I've got right here set up. Um, so, you should probably have something that you can program on that um, is a little bit easier than just working on the layout. I mean, that'll work, but having a separate setup, um, it, it's it's a luxury, but it is very nice, it's very convenient, and it's much easier to work on some of this stuff and keep it organized. Um, first thing you should always do is save your original sound file. Um, so I've got my ESU program here. We're going to read this file here, the decoder data. Um, you'll also want a notepad of some sort and a good pen with a lot of ink. So while this thing's reading the decoder data, um, I just want to talk about the proto throttle here for a second. You should know, oh, I got to put, set it to loc. That might help. So while that's checking that out, I'm going to turn this on here. Now the, the system isn't, or shouldn't be on, um, and you can see it's an emergency. Take that out. Um, so oh, there we go, we got a red flashing light. My DCC system isn't on, so this should not be uh, reading anything. Now everything on here is going to be set up a very certain way, and it may not be the same between every layout, but you should have your throttles programmed consistently so that way you can program all your locomotives consistently. Um, you may not be able to go from layout to layout with your throttle or layout to layout with your locomotives um, without your throttles or vice versa, your throttles without your locomotives because everyone may have their own preferences. Uh, it'd be nice if there was some system um, where everyone used the same thing but everyone's got their own purposes, their own ways they like to do things um, and I'm no different. So basically, these are self-explanatory. You got your dim lights, uh, front and rear. You've got your um, bright lights, and then your bright plus ditch lights. Now, they offer throttles for a while, and I've seen people customize their throttles where it says bright plus bright and aux for auxiliary lighting, um, and that's awesome because that could be for your beacons, that could be for uh, and cab interior lighting, whatever it is. That's a nice feature. Um, so with these, I stick to that only being for ditch lights. Everything else is handled by some other button on here. Uh, I set up all my beacons, prototypical or not, um, and um, some other auxiliary features to come on with startup. So cab interior lights I have, um, you can set up different ways. So they turn off when the engine's in motion like Broadway Limited does, or they turn on when in motion, or they're always on with the engine started up, whatever. You can set that up with some programming, and I can show you guys that in another video. Um, but you'll want to go through and set this guy up. So I just turned the aux off. I noticed that was on. Um, I use this down um, at a friend's layout, and so I've got some things on and other things off. But you'll want to go through to functions. Oh, that was it. Config functions. So horn F2, that's this guy. Bell. Brake, obviously is the lever. Brake off, nothing. So you could have brake off means you have some other function operating. You can change that in here. So let's just say the brake's off, you have a light come on, or you have some sound function activate, whatever it is, you can do that by accessing one of the many functions in here. And I'm not even sure how high this goes. Let's just check that out real quick. So up to 28 functions. So you could have anything come on when the brake is off. And that's pretty handy. 
So we can keep going, aux 9, drive hold. That's what I have it set for, so um, when I'm operating a train, if I'm coming down a hill, I'll hit drive hold, and then I'll bring this down from whatever speed to idle, and that'll give me what I'm looking for, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, engine on is F8. Engine stop, so if you want to have another function just to shut it off, you can. I don't really use a lot of these other features. And then here you get to the knobs, the headlight, front is front, bright, um, forward ditch lights, forward dim one, forward dim two. So you can actually have two different functions with the front dim switch. So when you have to set the dim, um, I've got the dim light on and the no other function, but you could add other functions. Um, to that so for sounds or whatever you like uh, let's just say there's a valve that you know, a pop it valve or something whatever you want comes on with that and then the rear is the same thing uh two functions for dim up button that's this guy and it's set to latching so when i turn it on and activate it it stays on um you can also go to momentary by going up or down from where you're at, where you are and then it'll only activate as you're pushing the button same thing with down is f5 um if we go over here to the computer. All right, sorry about that. I was having some issues with my camera. I didn't want to zoom in, zoom back out. Um, so if we look in here, F5 is the class lights and F4 is the dynamic brakes. Um, not all my engines have dynamic brakes, but it'll give you the sound of dynamic brakes. Um, for some some of the newer low sound decoders and some variations you can activate a different brake function with dynamic brakes so when you use your brake on your throttle it'll actually sound different um, and you won't hear anything and you'll hear different sounds so it'll sound and activate differently and you could have that with less braking effect or more braking effect um, I haven't gotten that far into it I might explore that option a little bit later uh, when I start running more but really I use this primarily for uh, uh, for switching, so I don't really need the dynamic brake effect yet. I may do it, um, I may try it in a small series of engines and kind of isolate that group and really figure out and pin down the programming before I try to go any further so I can figure out what I need to do. I try to do that and I have these little projects I'll set up like my latest momentum project which is to reset all my engines, uh, momentum and braking. Um, to kind of fit better of what I want and it's something I do I sit down and I'll focus on that for an hour and night for You know two or three days a week and I'll crank out all my engines which are like 20 engines that I have low sound in that Cooperate well with the proto throttle and that's what I use them for So I've got my list here. So this is the same across all my engines and all my throttles So they'll all react the same and then I have a list of things um that I do on each engine. So you'll activate F8, 9, and 10 when in consist, and you can do that right here. So this engine has the front and rear light on when in consist. Um, rear light is unnecessary. What's well, nice is with this, if I turn the engines around, the front headlight will come on if I have the front headlight on on the other engine. So that's actually really nice in consist. Um, you know, on the F units, I'm probably not going to be running this with the cab reverse, um, but with other engines, you might. So you can ha activate that. F4, the dynamic brakes. F5 for class lights, which I wouldn't be using. Um, and then 8, 9, 10. Uh, F7 I don't need because I have that as a li another lighting function. Um, but 8, 9, and 10 are nice. You've got your brake, your um, sound, and then drive hold. So... We'll go through now. We're going to set this guy up here. Uh, we need to set this to a long address. And this is 98C, so we're going to go 983. That's how I always do my uh, cab units like that. So, now from here, we can put this... Uh, you know what, let's finish up the proto throttle real quick. Um, so anyways, back to the throttle. We can go over here, so we've got the down, let, down button latching, and then we're back to the horn. So we can go through that. That's saved. You can go through and configure your notches for different speed steps and everything, which I haven't played with. 
Um, I may eventually, but I'm just going to go ahead and reduce the speed on all my locomotives when I speed match them anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. And these are various options. Variable break off. All these different things that I don't really play with. I try to keep it simple. It keeps it fun. So that's that. All right, back to the programming page here. So we got, we've gone through, I've decided I'm gonna have the front headlight on. Um, when you're in consist again, especially with F units because they're usually back to back, this is gonna be nice. Um, I can play with this a little bit like my B unit and not have the rear light on at all in consist. Um, and that way you don't have random lights coming on. This is a very nice feature to play with and be able to use. On my other old locomotives, I just turn this off. Um, so. Now with, that, uh, with, that, with this page over with, we can go on to the brake settings. So all my brake settings here, you've got your different brakes. So brake function two, three, and one. I set these all to the same. Um, I, I don't see a whole lot of need to have different brakes. I haven't gotten that far. But what you can do, and we can get to this later, is change this one to a one brake. Um, and have that as a setting and this is a separate one and this is a separate, separate one like it is now and that way when you use your dynamic braking it has a different braking effect so it's either less effective or more effective or whatever and it activates that sound um, that's something that people can do um, and it works quite well so here we're going to go to see what we use for mac maximum braking Braking is set to 230 on a 14 to 1 helical cut gear ratio. So we're going to go to 230. Go over here, put in 230 for all of these. Make it simple. There, so they're all at the same. So whichever one I choose or pick, I'm fine. So later on, if I decide to change this, um, uh, that's something I'll have to address, and I'll probably do brake function 3 is the standard brake, brake function 2 is dynamic brake, and maybe brake function 1 is uh, for switching or something. That'll have to be something else I change out. Another function. Uh, so, at this point, um, we're getting towards the end of the simple stuff. I'm going to come up here um, for maximum speed, or stop to maximum speed. I have acceleration at 44.8 and the reason I say 44.8 is because that's CV50 on low sound 5 decoders. On earlier decoders it may not give you a time, um, but this is nice because you can make it much more consistent and once you, if you do this and set the max speed on all your engines the same, your engines are all speed matched, as long as it's a linear speed curve, which means you want that graph to go from one corner to the other straight. Um, with the same top speed across all your engines, and they'll be speed matched. And these, this guy I'll max out here to 228.48. Now this done, the operations of the drive is complete, um, for me anyways. And this is, I don't play with any of this other stuff. And be careful when you're scrolling around here with your cursor, if you land over one of these things and change it, and you don't remember what the number is, and you didn't save the original file, you could be in trouble. So I think at this point um, we're going to save here because we haven't gotten into the function mapping. Um, this is a great place to save this, so we're going to put in Milwaukee Road 983 and then OG for original file. So now this is where things get a little bit more complicated. So we've gone through a program, we've saved the road number, we've saved the speed settings, the braking settings. Um, we're going to get into the more complicated function mapping. If you don't care about the direction of the headlights being manually operated on the throttle, stop here. Um, this is basically for lighting features and control features to really take it, start taking advantage of the proto throttle. If you just want to run trains, you're good where you're at right now. This will operate the brake for you, this will operate the momentum for you, this will take care of everything else. If you don't care about the non-directional lighting, this is probably pretty good for you. But we're going to dive in. So, 
at this point we've got our function mapping here there's a lot of stuff all the way up to function 31 so we're not gonna really use anything past 13 um, uh, like you got cab door you got engine compartment doors reverser center one um, you know I'm not GP20 shutters open um, and then here are your shift modes so I, I don't get into all this stuff I don't need to I really don't feel like it this is your automatic brake sound fade out um, everything from here down or I should say here up I'm gonna completely modify so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so you guys can better see what this is here um, otherwise if this is good enough for you where we're at thank you for watching drop a comment drop a like a share subscribe if you care to um, but we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper and this this will give you a really good uh, well-rounded start into the proto throttle life um, and making use of the product so I'm gonna zoom in here and we'll get cooking all right so I like to work from the top down um, and just kind of get one thing straightened out at a time so front light one rear light one we'll go back and we'll use rear light two and front light two but first thing we want to do is we don't care what direction it's in so ignore that uh, driving we don't care if it's moving or not and what that means is if it says driving if I were to select yes then it's only going to activate when the locomotive is moving so you can do certain lighting effects sounds and stuff like that um, based on the functions that are available so with the amount of functions available on the proto throttle and the accessories and everything you can really get nuts and out of control here you can have a lot of fun and really do some amazing stuff um, but right now I'm trying to keep it simple and like I said I'll, I'll, I'll add a project and I'll do it across all my locomotives I try to do a couple things at a time um, and try it out first to make sure it works it's baby steps if you get too in depth if you just start re sh just shredding the whole program of locomotive and you make a mistake here and there you can really have some problems across your fleet so here we're gonna ignore the direction remove this let's see F11 is the rear light so there's that one is gonna be the bell horn coupler crash we don't use I don't even use F3 so I just leave it there uh, if I'm running with a regular throttle I'll use that don't need the shift mode dynamic brake fan awesome leave that the way it is forward aux 1 f5 aux 6 those would be ditch lights and everything else otherwise um, I'm not really gonna get crazy about it I'm just gonna leave that on until I figure out what they are otherwise this would be ditch lights forward ditch lights rear for me f7 or sorry uh, that would be class lights ditch lights front ditch lights rear um, yeah so going down we're not going to touch any of that stuff we're going to go straight to f11 12 and 13 which is the rear headlight which we already did the front dim and the rear dim so we're going to go front light 2 rear light 2 we're going to turn off the dimmer on this guy now we're going to go to function outputs and we're going to look for these two outputs so function light front light 2 output we want set at 1 that is the dimmest that we can get for that light and then rear light 2 we're going to do the same thing and that's it that's that's what we needed it's a dimmable headlight for both of them so that's set to go and that's that's all we're really going to activate um, and be playing with there's a drive hold nothing crazy going on there 
Uh, you, you can really get nuts with this stuff. We got flange squeal on this thing. Um, I can change this to um, F8. So you gotta be careful with that cursor. So F8 on. Yes. So now, oh, and we can turn off F19. We don't need to worry about that. So now we'll have flange squeal when we're when we're moving and with F8 activated, non-directionally, it doesn't matter which way it is. Normally I wouldn't do that too often, um, but I want to see what it sounds like in this locomotive and passenger service when I get to that point. And let's see, F7 cab door 1, we'll put this guy um, for giggles. Um, we can set brake off. Let's do this. It's F22. So for a little bit of fun, we're going to go back to the proto throttle here. Turn this guy on. Brake off. Brake off, we're going to set to F22. And so every time we turn the brake off, you're going to hear the cab door. Why? Uh, because we can. Just for fun. Um, so save that. Oh, go through. Got the rest of them set. Engine stop. We don't really need to hear anything. Um, but... Uh, swap. Uh, dim 2... If we really wanted to, we could do um, shutters open and closed. We could do a sanding valve. Isolation switch. Actually, if we wanted to, we could put the uh, flange squeal while the headlights are dim for like slow motion stuff. That would actually be kind of cool. Um, but for the moment, we're going to do it just under drive, so... We can save that, and then we'll go back to the main menu. Ah, oh, what am I doing? Save it, back to the main menu, power off. Cool. So I think I've got everything the way I want it right now. Um, so we're going to go up here. We are not going to click on the musical notes. You don't do that unless you're writing sound files, which we are not doing. Um, you can really mess up a decoder. Uh, you got to have the original sound file if you do screw it up. Uh, for scale trains, for instance, you can go on their website, look up the part number for your locomotive, and you can find the exact sound file for it. Um, but this guy, we're just going to do decoder data. So we'll click on this little fella. We understand that we're going to overwrite the defaults and current values, but we save the original file, so we're good. This will just take a second, so I'll back out here. Alright, so I'm turning my layout on here. We've got the throttle that we've updated, because we've added um, a couple extra features to this guy. So before I add it to the other throttles and other engines and stuff, I'm going to... Make sure it works on this throttle first, because then we can take it out if it doesn't work. So layout power is on. We're going to fire up our throttle here. Start it up. I'm using my earbuds to record right now, so you might only hear the left side of me, but you'll hear the sound of the engine on the other side if we're lucky. That's a pretty awful sounding uh, engine right there. Okay, so you can see here we got class or uh, number boards, so we'll add that to. Um, uh, we'll add that to the uh, startup feature. So when we start the engine up, the number boards will come on, and then class lights are probably under ditch lights. So if we go up here. Nope, so we gotta figure out what that other function is for the headlights there. Uh, 
In the meantime, let's try moving. It's a lot of flame spiel. I think it's pretty cool. You can actually hear the rail kind of crunching under the wheels and that grinding sound. So what we're going to do is, now that I know we got to play with the lighting a little bit more, um, is we're going to do a little more testing on the track. We'll test it with the local programmer, and we'll take this a couple steps further, change the number boards to start up, and see if we can get that top headlight to come on um, since headlight bright. So we got this is dim. That's bright. We want that top headlight to come on. It's probably set under Mars light or something. We want that to come on with ditch lights. So we know what we need to do now. We'll figure it out and get it done. All right, so I took a couple notes on my notepad here. We want to get the uh, number boards to F8. And right now, Aux two, I believe was what we have here. So we want to set that to F8. But first, let's let's make a couple of notes. So F5 forward. is aux one and then aux f6 is aux two so we need to find out what those are that's dynamic fan this doesn't say anything over here and actually we can look at the function output say so aux one and that's the mars light so we want to go back to function mapping. Uh, let's test these out first. So we'll go to driver's cab here. Go. Uh, we don't really need to turn it on, but we know, we know F6. F5. So with F6 and F5 activated, we've got the number boards, which is going to be F, uh, aux 2, and F5 forward is the Mars light, which we want to set to front, bright, plus ditch. and the number boards will set to F8. Now that we know what F6 and F5 do precisely, without a doubt, go back to decoder, figure out we've got our ditch lights, front ditch lights is F6, So I'll we'll set this, ignore the direction, go to F6 on, ignore F5, and then this, which is F6 now, we want to turn that off and F8 on. Program that. So now, the Mars lights will come on with the bright ditch lights front, and the number boards should come on with locomotive startup. So go back to driver's cab and we'll put you in front of the engine so you can see if we've got success.